we all know the expression, not in my backyard, but a Fulton County woman says that plans for the land bordering her backyard will not only ruin her property values, but could threaten her safety. Liz Bishop is live in our newsroom tonight with a story that you'll see only on 6. Hi, Liz. Hi, Dory. Well, they say good fences make good neighbors, but an eight-foot-high fence in Johnstown is making one neighbor very nervous. She says no good will come of it. I would hate to have children here watch somebody drop a deer right there. Rosa Delfonsi thought she had found a little piece of heaven when she bought this small Cape Cod on County Highway 158 in Johnstown. What was this before? And it's been a hayfield forever. I expected it to be a hayfield forever. But just a couple of months after she settled in, everything changed when wooden posts started going up on neighboring farmland. This eight foot high fence may not look like a cage, but that's in effect what it will be when this big piece of farmland becomes home to hundreds of white tailed deer and the hunters who will pay good money to target them. The posted signs tell the story. A group called White Oak Farms is planning on building a shooting preserve adjoining her backyard. Obviously we're scared for our own lives. I mean, my daughter already said she won't bring the kids anymore once they start shooting. She's afraid. Delfonsi called the town code enforcer and was told the fence was legal and that the landowners could do whatever they wanted on private property. What do you think this is going to do to your property values? There will be no property value. <laughs> I think if I ever go to sell it, it, it'll never sell. This is the paperwork filed by Frank and Lucy Fernandez. They acknowledge they will fence in around 300 acres of land complete with holding pen for around 200 white-tailed deer. You might think there would be a lot of red tape involved in setting up a shooting preserve, but turns out there's not. DEC requires at least 10 acres of land with an 8-foot high fence. After a New York State Ag and Markets inspection and an agreement to test for certain diseases, DEC issues the permit. My fear is that a stray bullet or is going to end up in our yard and hurt somebody. Delfonsi's property runs 400 feet from front to back. She says the fence is less than 200 feet from her back door. How do you protect people living nearby then from whizzing bullets? You can't discharge a firearm, a gun, bow, anywhere within 500 feet of a residence, a dwelling, a structure. Uh, to ensure public safety and that's for the hunting season and that would also apply for these domestic game animal facilities. And I know hunters if they have a deer in sight that they've been eyeballing all day they're not going to not shoot it just because it's they're pointing towards a house they're going to shoot they want that deer. New York State wildlife biologist Joe Terrian who heads up the special licenses unit says the law is clear. They couldn't shoot anywhere near 500 feet of that dwelling, whether it was in their fence or right next to it, it would have to be 500 feet, regardless of where that fence is. That means hunters would have to shoot a football field away from that fence to be legal. The potential operators of this shooting preserve, Frank and Lucy Fernandez, declined an opportunity to go on camera. But in a follow-up phone call, Lucy Fernandez told me that the project was moving forward, but that anything they were doing was four or five years down the line. But if they wanted to, the operators could import deer for shooting and be up and running immediately. In the meantime, Rosa Delfonsi plans to keep up the fight. New York State needs to make some kind of laws to protect this from happening to other people. There are already more than a handful of these facilities in the capital region. Terrian says the biggest issues they've encountered are not shooting accidents, but escaped animals and the possibility that this imported deer will introduce disease into the wild population. Live in the newsroom, I'm Liz Bishop, CBS 6 News.